there, gamers. If you're playing Starfield, you're probably sick and tired of looking at this ugly, useless frontier ship. It's slow, it sucks, and every time you go to your ships, you see this thing in your inventory. You can't delete it, you can't sell it, but you can modify it. In this video, we're gonna turn your frontier into a powerful, badass starfighter. Don't go anywhere. Check this out. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dad Son Gaming YouTube channel. And we do all types of content on this channel. And if any of our videos helped you in any way, please show us some love by hitting that subscribe button that helps our content get pushed out. And that lets us know that you love our content and we'll continue to make more helpful content to get you guys through this game. And today we're gonna to be building a ship in Starfield. We're gonna take the frontier and we're gonna turn it into a better version. Now, this will be a full shipbuilding tutorial. We're not gonna do like some other YouTubers do and have the ship already built and then they take it apart. It's kind of hard for you to keep up. You wanna see the entire process from start to finish, and that is what we're gonna to show today. So without any further ado, let's jump into this and tell you everything you're gonna need before you are going to build this ship. Now it is recommended that you are at least a level 60 in Starfield. This way you have access to every component possible and you will not be level locked out of any of the components. Also for skills, it is recommended that you have piloting. And as you see, you wanna have this maxed out at rank four because we will be building a class C ship. And it's also recommended that you have a starship design max it out at rank four. And you will need about 450,000 credits. Now, if you're not the level that we recommend, you don't have the recommended skills and you are having trouble getting your skill set up, we have pinned two videos below that will show you how to level up extremely fast and show you how to earn credits fast. We have a credit farm and a skill point farm below. It's a part one and part two. Definitely get those videos and watch them and level up extremely fast and you will have some outposts as well. And speaking of outposts, it is recommended that you also have an outpost and you want to have a lander with ship builder. This way we can have access to all the vendors. So we're gonna jump in, we're gonna get started. If you have the prerequisites, let's rock and roll. So the first place we're gonna go is to the Voli system and that's where Neon is located. Once you get to Neon, we're gonna go to Teo Astro Engineering. Go to the elevators and you wanna get inside there and you wanna holler Veronica. The first thing we're gonna do to the Frontier is delete the current landing bay. Now, once you delete that landing bay, you wanna go in and delete the cargo hold. Delete that. Now we're gonna replace it with the ship bed 200 landing bay. Once you get it, Press Y on Xbox to flip it so the opening faces away from the ship. Once you have that, do not attach it yet. We need to add a one by one companion way. We're gonna add the Teo one by one companion way bottom A. We're gonna highlight both of them. We're gonna move them under the ship and we're gonna attach it and we should get no ship errors. Now let's move on to the next vendor. The next vendor is gonna be located in Narion. So you wanna go to Narion and once inside of Narion, we're gonna fly on over to the Stroud Eklund Star Yard. When you get here, you're gonna to talk to a cat named Havershaw. Let him know you wanna view and modify ships. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna take this weapon, we wanna move it up top, and then we're gonna delete the cockpit. Boom, delete it. Now the next thing you wanna do is choose a hab that you wanna put here. Me personally, I wanna have a mess hall. It's just huge, a lot of space. And so I'm gonna put that right there. After that, I wanna get a cockpit. I wanna get the Con Tiki B 600 bridge. And I'm gonna put that right on top. After that, I'm gonna delete all the landing gear and I'm gonna be replacing it with the Accu 11 landing gear port. I wanna duplicate these landing gears roughly about eight times. So I'm gonna put some on each side just to maintain the aesthetics of the ship and literally give myself landers to work with for our next location. Once you have done that, again, if you need to put something on the outside, you can, or you can run it straight back, it's up to you. But once you finish, run a flight check. If you're good to go, 
let's fly over to our next destination. Now the next location is gonna be a lazy man's dream. You're already in the Narion system because you're at the Stroudic and Star Yard. Back out of that system underneath Narion is Valo. Go to the Valo system and inside the Valo system, locate a planet called Palvo. On Palvo, there is a location called Hope Town. We wanna to go to Hope Town. Once you're in Hope Town, then approach the vendor as soon as you land and let him know you wanna view and modify ships. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how we're gonna make this ship a whole lot better. Now we're gonna be improving the reactor, the grav drive and the engines. For those of you who are new, let me explain what that means. By improving the reactor, we will have more power for weapons, for engines, for shields and everything else. So the bigger the reactor, the more power you have and the more weapons you can make available to yourself. Also, the grav drive. The current grav drive does not allow us to jump very far across the universe. By replacing the grav drive, we will be able to jump further distances without stopping and there's literally no limit that we can't go through. The engines, the top speed of these engines currently, the White Dwarf 2000s is 150 speed, but the mobility will be low. So we're gonna to need to have bigger mobility. I'm not too much worried about the speed for this build because we're gonna slightly improve the mobility. So we're gonna be replacing those things. So now that you understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, it's time to do it. So I want you to delete the engines, delete the grav drive and delete the reactor. Now, we're gonna get the best reactor on the game. The best reactor on the game is the Pinch 8Z reactor that gives us 40 power generated. So as you see, our equipment power has increased drastically. Next is the grav drive. We're gonna get the J52 gamma grav drive that gives us a jump thrust of 50. So literally we can go from one part of the universe to another without having to stop because we have limitations. Now it's time to add engines. I want engines that will allow me to stack components on top of it. Most people will go with the White Dwarf 3015s because of the top speed of 180, but they have terrible mobility. So instead I'm gonna go with the SAE 5660 engines because I can stack them on top of each other or put components on them. And it's gonna give me way better mobility and it fits the style that I'm going for. So once you have the engines, make sure you do a flight check and pass it and we'll move on. Now, once you exit Hope Town, the next place you wanna go is to your outpost. So wherever your outpost is, that's where you wanna go. And remember, on your outpost, you should have a lander with shipbuilder. This will give us access to many of the vendors without having to fly to them individually. Make sure you build that. So if you haven't built it, I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like this, this pad right here, you can make this on your outpost. And this is where you wanna do the majority of the construction of your ship. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take everything apart and separate it. Again, you wanna separate all components so we can make this from scratch. So separate everything, put it away, and you wanna leave yourself with just the landers and the bay. Now, once you have everything separated, we're left with just this structure. Move your landing bay towards the end, just like this, and then move your companion way directly in front of your lander. And if you have any structures that are not flat, make sure you change them to this, where it has the connection on all three sides. So we're gonna create more of these and duplicate these and just keep duplicating them until you have at least a total of six on each side. And that's gonna give us the desired length that we need in order to construct what we're gonna construct. So I like this length, I think it's pretty good. And once you have this, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go and you're gonna grab whatever hab you have. If you have three halves, do three halves. I'm gonna take my mess hall and put it right here. So that's gonna cover the entire thing here. And so my entry will be through the mess hall. If you look at this, I place this. Now I'm gonna actually go and start adding more halves. So in this case, I'm gonna add a, another hab and I'm gonna go with the galactic control station and I'm literally gonna put that right connected to my mess hall. So again, instead of the mess hall, you can use three halves. So once I have that connected, I'm actually gonna go and create a, another component and that is gonna be my galactic all-in-one berth A. So I'm gonna literally add that one next. And like I said, folks, just put any hab you want 
and where you want them. So you don't have to use exact same halves I do. You can use a workstation or a medical bay or whatever. So construct them how you want to construct them. Your halves can be any choice that you want. And again, you just want to make sure you fill this part up with halves. Now, once we have them filled up with halves and you are happy with the type of halves you have, whether it be medical bay or whatever, the next thing you want to do from there is you want to do one more hab and this hab literally will be at the front of your ship in the middle. So whatever hab you have, I'm going to do a workshop. I'm going to put this right into front. So again, it should look just like this. And you're going to have this one hab that slightly is over or past your landers. That's okay because we're going to add something to compensate for that. The next thing we're going to add to compensate for that is we're going to go over and we're going to get some landing gear. The landing gear that we're going to grab is going to be the Hope 5 landing gear. We're going to slide that right underneath the hab. You'll see it turn green in a minute and that lets us know we're good. So next you want to go to structural and we're going to look for the Hope Tech Thruster. Again, the Hope Tech Thruster and we're going to put this right in front of our hab. So this is gonna give a really cool effect. Trust me, you're gonna love this effect when you see it sitting still. And we're gonna move this to the middle. And from there, we're gonna to begin to construct some more structural pieces. Next piece we're gonna add is another structural piece. And this structural piece is gonna kind of give our ship more of that aesthetic look. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the Stroud Cap A. And what we wanna do is we wanna have this thing flipped upside down. You're gonna see me do this. So hit Y to kind of flip it. And I'm trying to flip it here. So flip it just like that. And once it's up, you're gonna do it to the other side and flip it. And it's gonna connect just like that. So if it looks like this, you're perfect. And we do have a hole underneath. Don't worry, I'm about to fill that with some cargo. So again, I'm gonna use a Galilean S204 cargo. And they give us about 1480 cargo. I'm gonna do two of those. I may change this later, but for now I'm gonna do two. And literally that fills in that space really nicely on this build. So if you're looking at your ship, you're doing pretty well. You got your cargo underneath and this is replaceable. It depends on how much mobility you want. And what we're gonna do underneath is we're gonna add another lander. So now we have an additional lander to help with, again, stabilization. So now it's time to construct the outside wing. So we're gonna get the Nova Cowling 2 LPM. And then we're gonna go back there and replace it. We're gonna flip it so it sticks. And then we're gonna shape the Nova Cowling 2LSF. And then we're gonna go and do the Nova Cowling 2LSA. Those three together form a nice little wing on the outside of the ship. And we're gonna move these back a little bit. And I may change that later, but we're gonna move these back for now. And we're gonna just flip and do the same thing to the other side. Just copy those pieces and move them over so you now form two aesthetic wings on each side. And again, we're looking good. This is looking like how I wanted to look and I think the placement is perfect. So we're getting to the design that I've envisioned in my mind to go to. Now I wanted to add some more habs so we have the space for it. So I'm just gonna add uh, two more habs and you can add whatever hab you want. So whatever two you wanna add, you can do that. So in totality, we have quite a lot of halves, so this has turned out to be a really nice version of the Frontier that we probably should have gotten when we started the game. But again, we got a simple version. So uh, you can construct one hab on the outside and then you can make that into whatever you want. And keep in mind, if you wanna change the halves, you can click on it and you can just cycle through left or right and it will change the hab to whatever you want it to be. So again, if you're doing an all-in-one berth A, you can cycle through different ones. So. Again, as we're constructing our hab, I'm kind of deciding what I want to put on the other side and just kind of keeping in mind the ones that I already have. And so literally, you know, many of you would have nine halves, but because I use that mess hall, I have six and one big three by three hab. So if you're using a three by three or three by one, keep that in mind. You can structure these accordingly just so you have yourself a good aesthetic. So we got pretty much all of our habs that we're going to have for now unless I decide to make any more changes. So once you have your habs, let's get ready to add the other piece. So next I'm gonna add over my Contiki B600 bridge. This is a bridge you came over here with and try to place it towards the 
end of the ship, not towards the middle like I'm doing here, but I'm gonna back this up to the end and make sure I have this place. Next, we're gonna add the 900T HE fuel tanks. This will give us enough fuel to go anywhere in the guy. So I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna add one to each side. Now, once I have them placed aesthetically to each side, I'm going to then add on the grav drive here. Now, what's cool about this grav drive is that you can attach noble weapon mounts to it. So we'll keep that in mind as we build this. So once you have attached the grav drive, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna put the reactor on the back of this. And like I said, the grav drive has attachments, so it's great for being able to attach things to it. And the reactor attaches to this very nicely. Next thing I'm gonna add is the Teo NCAP STBD. I'm gonna add one on each side, and this will help kind of construct that battleship type of look that we're looking for. And we're gonna add one on each side, just like so. Now, the next structural piece I'm gonna add is the Teo Mid Cap B STB top. I'm gonna add one of those on each side as well. Now, once you add that piece, it's time to add in those engines. And you're gonna see the reason why I chose the SAE 5660 engines is because of the way it can attach left, right, or top. And you can stack these above each other, but as you see, we're placing these aesthetically to kind of give the feeling of those engine lights that come across the entire ship when we launch. And as you see, this is almost turning out to be a destroyer ship from Star Wars, almost a mini one. So I like the way this is coming together so far and um, we're looking good. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna accentuate the side with the Deimos Wing A port. I'm gonna attach that to one side and I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna flip it backwards and I'm gonna have a Deimos A port AFT and that's gonna kinda give me some outside volume with the wings here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. I wanna duplicate it and flip it so that it matches this side. So again, just duplicating, flipping and adding and that is starting to come together really nice. Now, next thing I wanna do is I'm actually gonna get a Stroud Cowling 3LAPT and I'm gonna add this over top of the Habs and I'm gonna move this back toward the end here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath the ship and I'm gonna go and flip my Stroud Cap A's until they're matching the bottom part. So now we got the top showing versus the bottom and I'm just gonna copy that to each side. So once you duplicate it to the other side, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this Tiki bridge. I need to sit up a little higher. So I'm gonna duplicate one of my Habs and I'm gonna put it over top of my mess hall. And then I'm gonna move the bridge on top of that. So now it sits a little higher, gives us a little more real estate to work with and fill in a few spots here. And don't worry, we're gonna cover that middle. So I know you're concerned about that. We'll get to that middle in just a little bit. So now we have a little more space. So we're gonna go with the Stroud Cowling 1LBST. We're gonna duplicate that, put one in the back to fill in that space. We're gonna go to the other side and do the exact same thing. We're gonna flip it and duplicate it and fill in that space. And that is looking great so far. And we're looking more and more like a mini Death Star Destroyer. So loving this look so far. So now it's time to strategize and fill out the middle. So I'm gonna start off here with a Stroud Nose Cap B, which is this flat part here, it's a four top. And then I'm gonna end up going with a, a Stroud Cap C AFT top. So again, the Stroud Cap C AFT top, we're gonna to do that to fill this space in and now we got a little bit of space right here and we're gonna to try to fill that in and I'm gonna go with a Nova Bracer. So we wanna see how that looks and I'm just gonna put this weapon mount here because we're gonna get our weapon somewhere else. Next, I'm gonna add the shield. I'm gonna use the Assurance SG-1800 shield that gives us 1600 max health. I'm gonna put that in the back on top of our grav drive here. And now I'm gonna move the docker. I'm gonna flip it and move it at the bottom. We're gonna put the docker right on the companion way so it all connects. And we're almost done with this ship here. Now after evaluating a little further, I decided I want to make a few changes. So this is what happens when you record yourself building a ship live, you come up with ideas. So I want to move the Nova Bracer and replace it with a Deimos Cowling 4 and 
I also want to add these Deimos bumpers for and fill in some of the spaces on the ship here. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, add a bumper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add these Nova wing ports to the sides of the engine. That's why I chose them because you can actually clip things to the side. And I'm going to duplicate this and do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to do this here and kind of figure out where I want to put it at. I'm not sure where it looks good at, but I'm thinking it looks better on the side here. And so I'm going to add it here on this side. I'm going to flip it and add it on the opposite side. So next I want to start filling in gaps that I may have created while building this ship so I can have it looking a little bit more full. So I'm going to go to the front in that two gaps that we have here. And right beside the bracer, I'm going to put in a Stroud braking engine. I'm going to duplicate that and put that in on the other side. So that's how we got it looking and it looks pretty decent, but I still have some more changes I want to make. So I'm going to delete the middle here and I want to play around with this to see if I can get this looking a little better because I'm not satisfied with this at all. And I feel like I can do a little bit more with what we have here. So after reevaluating, I decided that the Stroud mid bracer would fill in these spaces a whole lot better and look at it. So satisfying to fill those spaces in. Now we're gonna add a demo spine C. And from here, this is a great option because we can have three weapons on here and we're utilizing this ship really good. So we're gonna pass a flight check. Looks like we're all good to go. We're gonna head on over to Stroud Eklund Star Yard and we're gonna to talk to our guy, Haversaw. It's time to weaponize this ship. Below, I have a list of turrets and these two turrets are the best in the game when it comes down to damage per second. And for me, I am going to choose the number two best turret in the game for damage per second, which is a PBO 300 Alpha turret. The reason I'm choosing this is because it only requires a max power of three to function fully. And that means I can put two of them and still have room to do more. Now, the great thing about these auto alpha turrets is that you don't have to fire them, they will fire automatically. So what I like to do with these, is I like to put these at the rear of the ship, and that is in case we have enemies that are chasing us, we can actually defend ourselves without having to aim or anything. So these will fire automatically and they will start to damage ships that are at your rear so you can have a little bit of a chance to eliminate anything behind you so that your ship won't get blown up. Now we're trying to figure out the best way to mount these and I'm gonna to try to mount them on top of the wing. And again, these will move automatically. Anything that is behind you, you will be able to shoot. Next, I will be adding the Suki Sasu 50K missile launcher. Now, the reason why I'm choosing these, they're not the most powerful, but they have the best range of any missile launcher on the game. And they only require a max power of four. And so literally I'm going to have the ability to get two of these as you see me trying to place them. The best place to put these is literally on top of the ship. And so I'm just trying to find a good place. So you can put these anywhere you want. It just really depends on how you want these things to look when they fire. So again, these are great choices for missiles because of the range and you can start hitting things before they even come into your full view of destruction. Now the next weapon I'm gonna be adding is the Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projector. These have the highest damage per second of any particle beams that are not turrets and they only cost a max of two power, which means I can put up to six of these bad boys on here and literally maximize my firepower. Now I got my weapons, I need to improve my mobility. I'm gonna delete one of these cargoes and replace it. And my goal is to get my mobility anywhere between 90 and 95. I wanna add the Store Max 60 cargo hold, which will lower my cargo hold, but it will give me an increased mobility of at least a 94. So now I'm cooking and I'm gonna color this thing. You can use whatever colors you want, really simple, but I'm gonna give it a simple color scheme and it looks like we're normal. And once we pass a flight check, then we're gonna look it over, make sure we're happy. 
and then I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the inside. Now, after looking this over, I decided to make some changes. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I ran out of space on my PC, so I could not record me doing the changes, so I'm just gonna tell you about them. One of the things I did was I replaced the braking engines right here with two Nova Cowling 2LSF. This actually gives me a more sharp look in the front and it accentuates the Hope Tech thrusters even better. Also, as far as my weapon goes and the particle beams, I reduced the, the amount of the vanguards down from six to five. And literally I have one right here, one right here, one right here. And then I have one of these on each side below. So again, that gives me five and I like the way they're gonna fire kind of in a good space here. Another thing I did was I removed the missile launchers from the top and I put them on the side of the ship. And what I did was I got a horizon weapon mount and this is why they're sitting kind of like this. And when it fires, it's gonna look really good and aesthetically pleasing when it does, because one of the things that I realized is that I wanted to have a good view up top. So I do have my view right here, but I also have put a galactic living quarters where I have a kind of a full view on the sides of the ship and a full view at the front, so I have nothing on the side. So this kind of opened up the ship a little bit better when it comes down from just viewing it while it's in space. Also, another thing I did was I swapped out the grav drive position from the reactor position, and I put the grav drive up top, and I put the reactor down a little lower. The reason why I did that is because it allowed me to remove these turrets from the wings because I didn't think they were in a really good firing position and put them up higher so I have more range. These will fire on their own, as you know, but it gives me way more range to fire by just using more horizon weapon mounts to mount these to the grav drive because a grav drive has space to mount them. And I also put my shield back here as well. So this is my final change of this ship. I'm gonna leave it as is. I think we have it the way we want it. We have it looking like a cool destroyer. And this is your frontier. Now, let's go in for a full tour of the inside so I can show you how this ship flows just for role playing purposes. Now, as we take a look at this ship from the outside, as you see, it is a monster. And one thing I love about using this landing gear is the mist that comes from it when it's kind of sitting still. This is pretty cool right here. And so I love this and I love how it is attached to this thruster right here. Now, when we go into the ship, we're gonna enter from the rear. And I know most of you are like, oh, I like entering from the front or the side. Well, the rear, yeah, you have to do a little bit of extra running around, but who cares? This is a game anyway, you can get places fast. So when we go into the ship, we're gonna enter through the rear. And one thing I love about the rear is you do have the choice to go in through the cockpit directly or just the board directly. And many of us will go directly into the cockpit, but I'm gonna go boarding so you can actually see the floor of the ship. So we're gonna open up. And there's a the dreaded loading screen. I hate loading when you go into loading a ship. So um, loading into a ship. Now, once we load into the ship, as you see, we did a great job of putting the docker and all of our main ladders in one space. This way we don't have a random dock spot. So again, this will be how we exit the ship, whether we're docking or whether we're just going on to land. So we're gonna climb up the ladder and this is gonna take us to our first part of our ship. And this is going to be the mess hall. Now, again, this was my personal decision to add a mess hall. And many of you may have added uh, more halves, but this is one big half. I love the space of this mess hall. It's pretty cool. This is a place where my crew can eat because I do plan on having a crew. And here's a bar here and a cooking area. And that's great for role playing purposes right here. And uh, again, we got the cool sign here. So. Where can we go from here? Well, we enter the ship from here, and from here, this is our ladder, this will allow us to continue to navigate through the ship. So uh, we can go up here to get higher on the second level, or we can go actually explore the rest of the level. So when we go through this right here, it's an office here, and this little main office leads us into the rest of the ship, and this is where we have our HABs. So again, all of our HABs are connected side by side, so each of the halves as you walk through here will have a side door and they will connect. So we got them connecting three across here and I can go all the way to the left if I need to, 
But I'm just going to go straight through the door. And this takes us into our control station, which is pretty cool. And I can also go through this door as well. So now we have our control station. And again, this is good for role playing purposes. And if we go back through this door, which is our main door, we can go through this door. And that leads into our crew station. So now we have our crew station right here, which is awesome. We go back out through this door. And again, we have our bed right here. And then we go through this door. And this leads us to our workshop. So again, if we have weapons or armor we want to work on, then we can go right here through the workshop. And I love this workshop just due to the board that we have. It makes us look like we're really working in here. So again, great, great vision. So love this workshop. And then we can go over again for a third time. And we have an armory right here where we can actually store the weapons after we make them, which is pretty cool. So this flow is really good. You got your workshop beside your armory where we can store our helmets and our guns and our weapons. And then if you go through here, we have another quarters here. This is a all in one berth, I believe. So again, we have another quarters here and we have a bed right here. And we have a nice relaxing area. So I'm sorry, this is our, our captain's cabins here. So this is our private captain's quarter. So Again, we have a bed and we have a seat right here. And so as we go back through, we want to make a right. And again, you have your workshop here. You're going to make another right. And then you're through the main hall. So pretty easy to navigate. There's your main hall right here. And this is our pretty much our first level, which is an awesome first level. Now, to get to the second level of the ship, what we're going to do is we're going to climb this ladder. And this will bring us to the second level of the ship. And the second level is pretty much wide open. As you see, we have a lot of open space here. We have our navigation. And again, we have our all-in-one berth. And then we have our research station right here. So this is pretty cool. And we, do have, we have another bed right here. So again, very wide open second level. And this is the third level and when we come up on the third level as you see we have these cool windows we can, look, we can look out these windows and this level is pretty much wide open as we have a pretty cool area to relax in and we have our windows right here again as well so we can look out these windows so this is kind of a relaxed area a chill area and we can go right up here to our bridge so very easy to go to, very easy to navigate to. We come up these stairs and we go right up to our bridge. So we're going to go up here to our bridge. We're going to go this way. And now this is the highest level to our bridge. And this bridge looks really, really awesome. I love this bridge. It just gives kind of that Star Trek feel, just that you're in command feel. So again, we have the pilot station right here, which is ahead of everything. And we can look out and we can see pretty much everything from this ship. And again, we get a nice sunset right here. So this is a full tour of the ship. And we're just going to show you how it looks when it takes off. And I don't really need to do a demonstration here. You guys know how these weapons work. But I'm just going to fire them. Not at a particular ship, but just to show you how they fire. And uh, you'll see what I mean when I talk about the way that they kind of coincide with each other. So I'm going to take off. And we're just going to space and we're just going to fire the weapon so you see how they fire in sequence. So, again, this takes off pretty nice. You have all your thrusters. And really cool ship. Way better than what you had before and definitely worth every penny. So, once you're in space, again, you have a very high mobility. So, this is going to be good in firefights. So, uh, as you see, we can mobile pretty well in this ship and i'm just going to fire so when i talk about firing these are my particles and if i do the particles and missiles at the same time you'll see the missiles fire outside of the particles so i'm going to fire the particles there's the missiles and as you see 
I can fire these missiles constantly. That's what I love about them. And then they don't take that long to recharge. So with the more powerful missiles, you have to wait too long for them to recharge. With these, you can probably fire, I think, a few shots before they do. We're gonna test that as well, but these particle beams, you just hold it down and they continue to fire. This is pretty awesome. So let's see how many missiles we can fire before we have to wait for the reload time. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can actually shoot out six of these missiles. And this is pretty cool because we can use our particle beams until they reload up and those fire constantly. So this ship is really, really well prepared for combat. And again, remember at the end or behind us, we have our turrets that will also fire from anything that is trying to approach from the rear. So folks, that's our ship build. Hopefully enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you like this content and let me know how your ship build turned out. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.